What is happening everyone? Welcome back to another video. Today I'll be showing you how to connect your Tic Tacs or Bluetooth headphones to your PSP for under $5. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Now up to this point, we have ourselves the solderless LED mod, as well as the solderless Type-C mod. So why not make it a trio and add the Bluetooth to the list? In my hands, I have four portable Bluetooth transmitters. We're going to be talking about how they work, things you should watch out for in case you want to buy a different model, and what style works best for each PSP. So let's get to it. So yeah, what these things are, are Bluetooth transmitters, and most of them actually come with a dual function. So you can actually have them work as a transmitter, which is what we're looking for right here, or you can actually have them work as a receiver. If you got yourself a wired pair of headphones, you can plug these in and pretty much turn them wireless. But we're not going to be covering that, as we're only here for the transmitter option. And the way these things are powered is through an internal rechargeable battery. So you can recharge them and just use them as is. So all you have to do is turn it on, plug it in, pair your headphones, and you're pretty much good to go. And once again, there are different styles, so we're going to be talking about each of them as we go through them, with the prices and spec will be on screen. And one last thing before we get started, I believe that these actually will be a better option to buy for the internal Bluetooth mod over these things. And the biggest reason is, although this is pretty small and compact, it unfortunately does not have a volume up and down buttons. And that is actually very important, as the units like this will most likely run at max volume or max gain. And what you'll end up with is a bunch of hiss in your headphones. If you're sensitive to hissing and you don't want to deal with that, definitely get one that has a plus and minus. Now I did have one new green model and I ended up returning it because it didn't have a plus and minus button. It just sounded like every other one. The latency was the same and they're all most likely using the exact same Realtek chip. So what's the point? Speaking of Realtek, ideally you want to get yourself at least a Bluetooth 5.2, but 5.1, 5.3, any of these will work just fine for you. The later, the better. I think the latest one you can find is probably a Bluetooth 5.3, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Now at this point you're probably telling me this is great and all, but I want something built in. I want something clean that is out of the way and this is just way too bulky. Well to you, I'll tell you that this is another reason why you should get these things. So here's my plan for the built-in Bluetooth mod. We'll be testing the modules, as well as ripping apart all the different Bluetooth adapters that I have and seeing which one fits best inside the PSP. So let's go ahead and get started with this one. And I would say this is going to be one of the more popular options as it's pretty compact, pretty self-contained, and it's going to work best with the E1000 as the headphone jack is closer to the center than all the other models. If you like to have a bigger grip, you can kind of push it out like so, or you can kind of point it forward, but you know, none of these options are going to be exactly perfect. Now trying it out with the slim models, which is the 2000 and 3000, it's not going to be amazing. I think the best way to go about it is to point it forward and just lay your pinky like so, and that should give you a pretty comfortable experience for the most part. It's going to definitely get in the way, but hey, if you're looking for Bluetooth, this is a cheap option that's going to work and hold you off for a bit until we rip it apart and install it on the inside. Finally, we have the fab model, and this one is simply not going to work unless you kind of install it at a weird angle, very specific angle like this, but that's just that. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend it because as you can see, the port here is recessed, so it's going to give us a pretty tough time trying to work with it, but that's no problem because the next model should solve that. And that would be this one right here. So this one has a stiff flexible connector, also charges through Type-C, it's got a microphone, and a couple media buttons on the front, which in the case of the PSP 1000, it's going to work pretty well, as you can kind of just push it out like so as you're playing with it, and it's going to give you a pretty decent experience if you just really want to get yourself some Bluetooth. Again, it's pretty flexible, so you don't have to worry about it getting bumped out. So for the 1000 model, I would definitely recommend this one, and I think it's going to work out pretty well once we do install it on the inside, as it is pretty compact. And here's what it looks like with the A1000. It's going to work with most grips. And for the slim models, you're going to have to do the wraparound method on the left pinky. Still very usable and enjoyable, unless of course you're playing this on your lap, which is not going to work out too well. But again, you can definitely still get away with it, all thanks to that flexible cable. Moving on, we have this one right here. And this is one of my least favorite ones. It's got a micro USB. There's no volume controls. And overall, it's pretty basic. It's going to come with one of these bulky connectors. And you can kind of see why I don't like this thing. Yeah, it's going to work with the pinky grip on the 1000 model. Actually, not too bad. And the same goes for the slim models. And the only redeeming factor is that the cable here is interchangeable. and gives you the option to try out different cables. For example, this one right here. A super small, slim, right angle to right angle connector. So technically, you can kind of plug it in, connect it to your PSP, and use that double side tape to kind of stick it somewhere. And if you are interested in this cable, I'll leave links for it. I did end up buying the shortest one, and I believe there were a couple different sizes. So if you're trying to do this kind of method, it's actually not too bad of an option, as long as you're not touching the UMD too much. Which with my usual grip, it's usually out of the way. So you can kind of push the cable all the way here and just stick it right in the middle. Finally, we have the big daddy of these things. This thing is pretty chunky. It's pretty well built. It's got an LCD. Yep, that's right. Interchangeable cable, a mode switch, type C. It's got an aluminum body and almost everything that you need if you're going to use it on anything other than a PSP. 
So once again, it's a chonker, it doesn't look great, and the best position to actually use this thing is exactly what you're looking at here. So it's pointing outwards like so, at least for the 1000 model. For the E1000, you got nothing to worry about. And finally, for this little model, it's pretty awkward, so I wouldn't recommend it. However, like I said before, you can get some double flat tape, get the short cable, and you have yourself a pretty compact experience. And I think this one might actually be one of the better options. Yes, it's gonna cost a little bit more, but overall, if you're just looking for something that works, and for the most part is out of the way, honestly, I think it's a pretty decent option. Until, of course, we rip it apart and install it on the inside. And finally, that's what it looks like on an E1000. Now, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but there are U-Green models, and I would recommend not going for them. Not only they're pretty expensive, but most of the models that they have are actually missing the volume buttons, which in my opinion is a very crucial option if I want a clean experience. So speaking of experience, how is the sound quality, volume, latency, and the hissing that is coming from the self-noise? Well, one thing for sure is that they're all very similar. I couldn't find any distinguishable difference between each model, and they all sound very similar, have very similar latency, very similar hissing, so there's not a whole lot of difference between each model, as they are most likely using the same real tech chip on the inside. Sound quality is pretty standard, can't complain. The self-noise can be drastically reduced with the built-in volume controls on these things. And of course, when you do reduce the volume, you will lose a bit of volume, but you'll still have plenty of volume to work with, and that is something you can tweak to your liking. Personally, I would rather have a nice clean experience rather than a loud, muddy experience with all the hissing in the background when something is not playing. Which brings us to latency. How is the latency on these things? And to that I can tell you it's very acceptable. The only time you'll most likely have a problem with it is possibly with rhythm games. Other than that, the latency is not bad at all. And uh, what I could do here is give you a quick sample. So let me go ahead and uh, pair one of these up and give you an idea of what it sounds like. Speaking of which, how do you actually pair these things? Well, it's very simple. You wanna start off by having your headphones, tic tacs and your transmitter turned off. Then you wanna hold down the power button on both of them until they go into pairing mode. And once they're both in pairing mode, it'll take around 10 to 30 seconds for them to automatically connect. And once that's done, you are pretty much good to go. You got yourself a Bluetooth PSP. So now I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to our wired microphone to reduce any latency for my wireless mic. And here's what that looks like in comparison to my wired headphones. And with all that being said, I think I've pretty much covered everything. If I have missed anything, feel free to ask me in the comment section below or check the pinned comment. Of course, you can always go ahead and use these things on other devices such as your 3DS. They've got so many uses, they're roughly around $5, and for that price, you really can't go wrong with them. Not to mention that it will eventually rip them apart and install them on the inside. Now there was supposed to be one more, but the seller for some reason cancelled the order, so I never got it. But it does look pretty cool, it's pretty small, compact, and it was made for the Switch. Anyways, that is all for this video, so thank you for watching, I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, bro.